welcome to the Cardano Virtual Summit Proof of Stake Edition. My name is Jerry Fratis-Gatos, and I'm Chief Commercial Officer at IOHK. I hope you've had the chance to catch all the great panels over the couple of days of the conference. We are very excited about the future of Cardano and IOHK, and look forward to giving the world access to the capabilities that Cardano offers us as a next generation blockchain platform. Leveraging our Atala suite of solutions, in this case, Atala Trace, we seek to solve many of the vexing problems the world faces today. We will now be sharing with you our partnership with BeefChain, a Wyoming-based solution that empowers ranchers and helps tackle issues of food security and within the broader beef supply chain. Today, you will hear from Tyler Lindholm, who is Chief Ranch Operations for BeefChain, Stephen Lupien, CEO, Philip Schlump, CTO, and Ahmed Alcabra, Atala Trace Product and Partnership Manager for IOHK. I hope you enjoy the presentation. And without further delay, I will pass things over to Tyler Lindholm, Wyoming State Representative, cowboy, and all around great person. Give it up for the great and powerful Tyler Lindholm. <laughs> Thanks, Jerry. I don't know about great and powerful, but uh, I'll take it. <laughs> so what I what, what I want to talk about when it comes to food traceability ha has a lot to do with the fact that food safety is always of, of concern. And um, we've seen multiple different governments across the world trying to tackle this issue. And yet, oftentimes, there's a failure. Um, specifically, you can see some of the some of the issues that are up on the screen right now in regards to E. coli infections, outbreaking, um, and beef fraud. Um, beef fraud is a big deal based on natural and, and what you're actually eating and what those, what those labels actually say, those attestations to that product. And what that, what that accounts to is, it, is it fraud and will you get sick? Um, even though I should note also, because um, I, I think it's important to note, you have a higher risk of getting sick from romaine lettuce than you do beef. So eat beef, forget the vegetables. <laughs> I think that's an important aspect to remember. Um, so if we can go to the, the, the next slide, there we go. So I, I wanted to talk about these food recalls and why they're so costly. Um, uh, about a year and a half ago, we saw Walmart transition uh, their their traceability in regards to romaine lettuce and essentially leafy greens directly to a blockchain. And on their legacy system, the reason why they did this is on their legacy system that they had, it took them about six days to do a trace back to where the product came from. Well, within six days, what you end up seeing happening is a, a big outfit like Walmart will sweep every one of their shelves across uh, across uh, across the country uh, they don't really have a choice in that regard they've got to because they've got a foodborne illness outbreak and so that well lettuce is fairly cheap when you're talking about thousands of stores and millions of pounds of it, it is extremely costly so they did transition to a blockchain solution um, and on their test run they were able to cut down that six day timeline down to right around two and a half seconds and so when you're talking about that and what that means as far as speed, they no longer have to sweep every shelf. They can just target the stores where that product was delivered with that contaminated food, uh, thereby saving them millions of dollars, not just on product, but on time spent hunting it down and those types of things. In fact, they were so sure of their product that um, as soon as they found out how quick they could do it, uh, they immediately told all their producers that they don't really have a choice and they need to transition immediately to their new system. Uh, so that was good, good for blockchain, that's good for food safety, and that's good for traceability as far as knowing where your food comes from. And I think that's becoming more and more prevalent and more and more important to all of us. Um, and, and some of the some of the aspects that that I think are worthwhile talking about here are when you're talking about food and, and where it comes from, once you're burned and get sick from food. We've all probably had a foodborne illness at some time where you ate something bad, or at least I have. Now, granted, I'm a little bit more of adventurous of an eater than most people, but I've certainly gotten foodborne illness. Um, when you look at that and what, does, what that does to brands though, once you're sick, you're probably not gonna be one of those type of people that go back to that. Um, and when you look at the whole holistically, as far as how things, how things move forward, uh, that's not only going to cost a company uh, quite a bit over time, but as you talk to other people, I mean, that starts to 
that, that has a trickle down effect as far as uh, trustability and how you move forward. Um, and, and on the slide here, you can see several food recall case studies where not only, not only are they hurt by their, uh, not only is their brand and reputation hurt, but then on top of that, they, they're getting fines from the USDA and uh, the, the peanut corporation of America. They're no longer in business. Um, <laughs> a billion in lost production and sales, a billion dollars in peanut butter for Christ's sake. I mean, that's, that's pretty nuts. Anyways, we're going to go to the next slide. And I think I, I think I get the opportunity to turn that over to uh, my buddy, Steve Lupian, who's the president of Beef Chain. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, IOHK uh, for this opportunity. And I'm very proud of the, of the partnership we have with them uh, on developing our technology. Uh, Beef Chain was founded in Wyoming uh, three years ago. Um, and Beef Chain was, was formed to solve um, a couple of problems. And those problems almost all impacted um, our, our ranching community. We were finding that ranchers were getting increasingly squeezed by intermediaries, by regulation, by fraud, by any number of things. And we saw um, this technology as an opportunity to fix a lot of those, a lot of those problems. Uh, additionally, you know, data is data. And when we have this data that we collect for beef chain for our consumer, our retail and our, and our food, food service programs, you know, we also have data that we could share with our ranchers and, and provide some um, ranch management solutions to them in the future as well, too. So <clears throat> the world is changing. Um, you know, blockchain certainly in, in situations like food safety, in situations like supply chain, um, blockchain is really the only way to go um, because of all the attributes of, of, of blockchain. It's immutability, it's transparency, you know, it's distributed nature. And, and, and this is equally important when you have this type of data on the blockchain, the encryption and security is important to our ranchers as well too. So our partnership with um, IOHK allows us to create a, a rancher-centric um, suite of products and provide benefits to our consumers, uh, be they at a restaurant, a retail store, or quite frankly, in this new world, we're finding a lot more opportunity for um, direct to consumer from producers. Blockchain and our partnership with IOHK is gonna make that possible. Uh, can I ask for the next slide, please? Ah, size of the market. <clears throat> You know, the, the beef market, as you can imagine, um, is absolutely astronomical, and it's incredibly important to uh, the state of Wyoming. Um, as you look at the statistics, and I won't read through them, you know, um, a lot of these ranches are small, family-owned, or individually owned, and they're producing a bulk of the, of the product that's out there. So the more we can do to help these family ranches, um, I think will will also help um, in, ensure the safety of, of our supply chain. Too many big intermediaries um, can create create problems. So blockchain again gives us the ability to um, work with the our, our member ranchers, you know, provide them the benefits that they need, and more importantly, it allows us to um, to provide information to our consumers about the quality of the beef that they're, that they're eating. As, uh, as Representative Lindholm, uh, who is a, a, a cattle rancher himself, can attest to, you know, a lot of, a, a lot of fraud happens in, in, the, in the beef market where people are claiming that their product isn't what it uh, truly is. And in, the, in this world today, more and more people are seeking out products that are, you know, um, grass-fed, hormone-free, you know, um, any number of other attributes. And we and our system ensures that consumers are getting the product that they're paying for. And more importantly for us, because we are so rancher-centric, we also want to ensure that the ranchers get what they deserve for investing more time and effort in creating a quality, safer product. Next slide, please. Um, our strategic partnership, um, where IOHK and Beef Chain, um, we have put together essentially uh, not only a partnership among ourselves, but 
uh, partnerships with other organizations that provide meaningful and tangible benefits to, to what, we're, uh, what we're doing. I'm very proud, and this is through the efforts of, of, of Tyler Lindholm, you know, we've be, we are the first company to receive USDA certification um, for our quality systems in how we uh, how we um, work with our ranchers, uh, and you know, t you know, I, I can't compliment Tyler enough on the amount of work that was involved in doing that. But as a result, you know, people who are doing business with Beef Chain now do have the assurance that um, the product that they're dealing with is audited and and certified by the by the USDA through uh, Beef Chain auditors. Additionally, we've partnered with uh, the state of Wyoming and uh, the University of Wyoming. And, and through those partnerships, you know, we can work with the regulatory authorities to make sure that um, one, we meet all the standards, and number two, that our consumers can be assured that the products that we're, um, that we're um, producing um, and delivering uh, meet those standards. And lastly, our partnership with uh, IOHK and the Atala uh, uh, price, uh, uh, trace product, um, brings state-of-the-art technology to, quite frankly, a bunch of ranchers. You know, we, um, you know, we're not technologists, so we are absolutely um, delighted by our partnership with IOHK. It, it, IOHK is providing the backbone to our system. Uh, it is secured. It is transparent. It is scalable. Um, they, IOHK has provided everything that we've needed and more. Uh, they've also just been an absolutely unbelievable business partner um, to us. And we've been solving our um, complete company problems together, not just them saying, here's what we should do from a technology standpoint. So I can't, I can't tell you um, how much our business has improved and grown as a result of our, um, our relationship with the, with the folks at IOHK. Uh, next slide, please. You know, use cases are always a challenge um, in, in the blockchain space. Um, you know, most of us, uh, I'm, I'm sure that are listening to this uh, to this podcast um, are in this business and have read many, many uh, white papers. And often you read a white paper and you say, you know what, this doesn't really need a blockchain solution. There, this, the, you know, this solution is just using blockchain and window dressing. You know what, in our business, that is absolutely not the case. Um, supply chain is one of, I think, the very, very natural um, extensions or, or, or natural use cases um, for this technology because of those things that we've talked about uh, talked about earlier. So what are the use cases that that uh, beef chain um, um, is, is using blockchain technology for through our partnership with, with, with IOHK? Well first of all, as I mentioned, we, we provide, what's called a PVP program for our ranchers. That's a process verified program. And that's run by Tyler Lindholm, who's our, our chief of rancher operations. Tyler and his auditors, who are also ranchers, go out and work with our ranchers um, to improve their processes and to ensure that the product that they're, um, that they're supplying meet certain standards. And the standards we audit against are a natural program, a non-hormone treated program, a source and age verification, which is especially important when you export product, and a Wyoming Plus program. Um, so, so that is a natural, a, a natural use of blockchain technology because we wanna be able to maintain immutable records um, of what happens on the ranch, you know, how each um, each cow, because we do track each cow via an ear tag, um, you know, and and can verify, um, um, you know, exactly you know what's gone in in that in that cow's life, and through the USDA, um, you know, we um, have trained auditors that go out and, and 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 verify that. So I'd like to ask Tyler Lindholm, who knows this process much much better than I do, to to just give us a you know a, a very very quick rundown on this particular use case. Right. Well, and I think this is kind of one of the funner parts of, of what Beef Chain has been able to do in a short amount of time is the big question that we ask ourselves, we want to do this traceability. We want to prove uh, where your food comes from. Um, but 
how do we convince ranchers to put tags in their animals' ears? I mean, where's the return on investment for ranchers? Um, thankfully, we, you know, there's an existing program called a process verified program. And for those of you that have ate at Whole Foods or bought your food at Whole Foods or those types of organizations, you, you'll go in and you'll see grass fed or non-hormone treated cattle. Well, the only way that those can be verified as such is through the traditional program of a process verified program, which does have a return on investment for the ranchers. Anywhere from five to 25 to 50 cents extra a pound. Now, when you're talking about a herd of cattle, that's an extra 25 to 30 grand every year that a rancher puts in their pocket. So that return on investment aspect was really important for us. Most of our ranchers know that we use blockchain technology. They have no clue what that actually amounts to or the purpose of it. But what they do know is that as it stands right now, over, over the last two years, our program has returned investment back to those ranchers where they've made more money for raising a quality product. And that's, uh, that's food right here and right local. And so we're, we're really proud of that aspect. It is, a li- it is a little bit of extra paperwork for a rancher to do. Um, but as we're automating things, thanks to the help of Cardano, uh, Cardano's team with IOHK, it's, it's um, becoming easier and easier for our ranchers. So that's really the gist of it and why we did it is that return on investment angle is huge for us. Uh, thank you, Tyler. Another important part, and um, it is um, it is going to be discussed in, in a little bit from our chief technology officer, is our latest pilot um, is a little bit different than our, our PVP program. Uh, we are, um, our, our, the pilot we're going to be talking about today actually involves our consumers. And we also believe not only should the, cons- the, um, the ranchers uh, benefit from this technology, but we believe there is great opportunity for consumers um, to uh, better understand where their product comes from and help them make a more informed choice uh, when, when choosing their products. So um, uh, what we're gonna talk about next is a consumer product that is there to enhance the consumer experience and to help educate the consumers about where their product comes from, you know, uh, literally in our particular case, back to the rancher where you can meet the ranching family that's cr- producing your product, and it educates you a little bit about the, ty- the the product that you're that you're consuming. Oh, could I have the next slide, please? So. Um, <clears throat> What else can we do with this information? We can take this information that our consumers um, provide to us and also help create a a better product and provide that feedback uh, back to our our ranching community. So a perfect use case for for blockchain uh, and a great pilot for uh, beef chain and um, IOHK. So uh, a couple other things here that we're going to be looking at in the future, and I'll be very, very brief about this. Blockchain also allows us to change the way that um, the ranching business is financed and the ranchers are paid through a tokenization model. You know, we could speed payments. Um, One of the challenges with the ranching community today is they get paid at the end of the year, one shot payment. Um, and you know, and they take loans out at the beginning of the year to run their operations until they can hit their hit their paycheck when they sell their their product at the end of the year. Well, we may be able to greatly disrupt that through tokenization, and um, and I think um, um, blockchain um, really allows across a lot of industries this tokenization could fun- fundamentally change the way um, business models operate. In our particular case, it may even eliminate the the need for ranchers to actually go out and get loans. In many cases, those loans become unbelievably oppressive on ranchers, especially if the price drops radically, which is happening happening right now. So I think our trade financing um, is an important new aspect. And um, the import-export um, uh, market is incredibly important, especially with what's happening in the world today. The amount of information that you need to have on your product um, you know, beyond just agent source um, you know, can be oppressive to ranchers. So our system um, will allow our member ranchers to take better advantage of the, uh, of the export market. Would you like to add anything to that, uh, our, our resident rancher? No, I think, you know, that we, we've got the opportunity to go really leaps and bounds in lots of different directions. And as Steve said, disrupt this, this whole food supply chain. And the goal is to make that supply chain, the long-term go- goal, 
is to make that supply chain a lot shorter so that you as a consumer know, know your rancher. Even though they might be across the world, you know who your rancher is, you know how that animal was raised, and you can prove it immutably with blockchain technology. And with IOHK's help, that's going to become a reality pretty quick, I think. Uh, next slide, please. Ah, let me uh, adjust my screen here for a quick second. Um, the benefits um, of blockchain in the supply chain market, I, I think are are really evident. Uh, as Tyler mentioned, you know, um, the ability to trace your food um, back very, very quickly, not only pr provides safety for consumers, but quite frankly, it is um, it, it, um, it cuts cost dramatically. Uh, if anyone has not looked up the famous uh, white paper on uh, the Walmart mango study, uh, I absolutely recommend you do. That is an absolute uh, textbook a book example of uh, supply chain um, visibility. Why is that important? Okay. Uh, you know, two things are at stake when there's um, there's there's a big supply chain challenge. Uh, the first one is uh, the reputation, and in, in, and quite frankly, as as Tyler Linto mentioned um, earlier, even the existence of 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 your of, of food company, uh, Peanut Corporation of America, as um, as uh, uh, Tyler mentioned in an earlier slide, uh, ended up going out of business because they actually fraudulently. Um, withheld information when a when a when a um, um, uh, a safety uh, issue a salmonella problem was discovered and quite frankly one of their executives was sentenced to 28 years in jail so there's some there's some you know real risk um, when when food safety problems come up you know brand reputation viability um, of your company and in many cases even the viability of the products. It often takes years for consumers to become comfortable again um, with a particular food product. Spinach is still suffering from um, a, a food recall a number of years ago. And you know, certain, certain companies that have used romaine lettuce um, you know, have, um, are, are still dealing with uh, some, uh, some consumer um, trust issues. And romaine itself still isn't back to um, its, 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 its pre-problem levels. So you know, I, I think there's a lot at stake when problems happen. And if you know, blockchain allows us to zero in on those problems very, very quickly, um, in many cases, instead of having to clear, you know, whole shelves of, of product and do um, you know, widespread recalls through blockchain technology, we can narrow problems down very quickly to a very particular source and mitigate the problem at that source without creating, you know, the, the, um, the supply chain wide challenges that, that often happen. Um, and lastly, again, it's about consumer engagement and trust. The more consumers know about the product, um, the one, the better for the consumer and the better for the producer. Um, we want to not only disrupt the supply chain um, from a intermediary standpoint, but we want to disrupt the supply chain so that we can have more engagement between the consumer and the producer. Through that partnership is where we're going to get trust. And next slide, please. Um, again, continuing on benefits, uh, efficiency, absolutely. You know, as I mentioned earlier, data is data. And once you have that data, that data can be used for any number of, of, of purposes that would benefit the supply chain, benefit the consumer, and in many cases, uh, benefit the, uh, the producer. Um, that disruption um, that uh, Tyler has mentioned will also produce greater margins. You know, Tyler mentioned that our ranchers are getting a higher price uh, for their product. They're getting that higher price because they're able to immutably prove that, that their products meet higher standards. Without that proof, the intermediaries are the ones that benefit. And we want to make sure that by our ranchers being able to prove um, you know, the, the quality of their product, what would normally go to an intermediary goes to the, uh, goes to the producer. Um, that's going to create higher quality products. Um, it's going to produce safer products. 
Um, the pr products are going to be uh, more ethically raised. It's going to be more sustainable. The benefits are immutable, uh, or, or 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 not immutable, unlimited. Um, and lastly, you know, blockchain technology actually helps our regulators, and you know, um, you know, any number of ways. You know, that the data that we collect, you know, we can share with our regulators, and and they can trust that without um, a lot of additional cost in compliance. In many systems, you can actually give your regulator an on ramp and let your regulators see some of this data and help provide some of that trust. So, um, you know, uh, blockchain, you know, both benefits the consumer, the producers, and the regulators. So, really, the only ones that are being challenged are the intermediaries right now that are, that are quite frankly, the ones that we are trying to disrupt. Uh, next slide, please. With that, um, I'd like to introduce um, our chief technology officer. Uh, his name is Phil Schlump. Uh, Phil is also a, a professor of, uh, at the University of Wyoming and has um, been in this space uh, much longer than, than uh, most programmers have. And we're very proud to have him as a part of our team. So with that, I'd like to introduce Phil Schlump. Hi there. The, um... I'm going to talk a little bit about the technology behind this. And, you know, there are other supply chain processes out there. And you go, what's unique about cows and supply chain? There's a number of things that are really different from other, other things. I and mean, lettuce manufacturers, there aren't that many people that raise lettuce and sell it commercially. But in the ranching field, you see that the average size of ranches is actually very small with I believe 42 cows per ranch. So it's a very largely distributed set of inputs and cows themselves provide some unique attributes. They move on their own, okay? They lose tags and in the processing, when you track the movements and you track the processes that goes through with cows, what you find is they also involve some things that most other products don't have associated with them and it makes it nearly impossible to use an existing off-the-shelf tracking system for them. The biggest thing is that eventually the cows are going to get deconstructed, which is not what you usually do, and they're going to get deconstructed into pieces. Another big part of this process from a technological perspective is the fact that this doesn't run on the time frame of a software process. This, this process runs on the time frame of the cows have to be born and grow up. And it's taken time to get through that where we actually have cows that we're tracking now that started out being tagged years ago because this involves the life cycle of our cows. Uh, this provides a lot of unique things. So a tracking system like this starts out with by and large RFID tags and that's where the cows start, but eventually these things have to get combined with other things and cows move through a lot of different steps. Uh, you just think about, you know, a cow gets raised and pretty soon, you know, it's packaged meat on the shelf, but there's a lot of steps in between and a lot of different players. Some of these players, you know, we talk about disrupting it, but some of them we'd actually like to completely take out of the supply chain because not only are they expensive and it isn't good for the cows or the cow's health or the quality of the product, but they don't serve any useful purpose in a world where we can actually effectively track on a blockchain and demonstrate the value of the things on the blockchain itself. So there are pieces we want to take out and we're working through that, but you also end up with something that has unique processing and we go through a number of different tags and processes. Eventually we end up with where we'd like to be able to prove at the end that yes, this is a real product that people are eating, that it meets these criteria, that it has these particular uh, proof of process, proof of provenance things, that these are the things that are, are, are the qualities that we want the consumer to end up seeing at the end. And right now that visibility isn't there. That visibility is an important piece of why we're using a blockchain to do this because the immutable data and the blockchain guarantees that the data is real, that this is what really happened in the past. And 
Guaranteeing that reality of the data is hugely important in the end process. So, you know, we talk about it, we look at the cows on one side and on the other side, we've got the finished product, hopefully with a menu or in the case of this particular case with an actual uh, card that has a QR code that allows the end person to trace or a package of meat that you buy in the store that can allow you to actually use your phone and trace that and see, is this real? What, what, was, what was the state of this cow? Where was it born? Where did it come from? In some other foreign countries for the export market, you know, we see that there are large portions of what is counted as beef isn't even really beef, it's water buffalo. And that's a huge thing. We don't see as much of that in the United States. But even so, the question is, if you're gonna spend money on an all natural cow, it, did it come from the right ranch? Did it show up at the right place? Um, if, if you're gonna spend money on things like aging, is there a track of how long this was actually aged and how it was processed? And those are important to the consumer. There's another piece of the health and safety that's important to the regulators to be able to trace back through this process and go, okay, if we had a problem here, where did it come from without like emptying the shelves? And how do we get to, this is where the problem is, let's take care of the problem, not throw away tons and tons of beef that has nothing wrong with it. That's expensive to throw away just because, yeah, it's out there someplace and what do we do with it? So with that, the question is, you've got a QR code there, what does that actually lead us to? I mean, there's stakes on the table. There's a, a maybe a business card size thing that has the QR code for this particular animal so that you can track its history. Um, you want, uh, let's, let's do a demo and actually scan this QR code and see what it looks like on a phone. And most phones today, 96% of them, they can do this. So the question is, what's in that QR code and where did that steak really come from? Is it all natural? Is it from the place it claims to be from? So let's take a look. The Camp Stool Ranch, since 1878, and it's from a real family of ranchers. So that's kind of the end goal. And we're getting, thanks to IOHK, we are very, very close to having this put together, not just for this, but for actually the entire process. Hi, everyone. This is uh, uh, Ahmad Al Kabra. Uh, I'm the product and partnerships manager for the Atala Trace at IOHK. It's, uh, it's, been, a, uh, it's been a really exciting uh, uh, journey with the beef chain, folks. I, keep, I always learn the new things about the beef cattle industry and, uh, and the cool tech that they've developed so far and the, and the business that we're after. I mean, as you, you saw, I mean, this uh, industry suffers from a, from a massive problem, not only for the companies and supply chain parties, but also from a brand trust and consumer confidence. So Beef Chain, along with Atala Trace, uh, powered by Cardano, we aim to empower ranchers and other parties gain visibility and control of their supply chain, as well as provide that last mile aspect to it, which is directly engage and foster trust with customers. So um, just a quick sneak peek of Atala Trace that uh, currently is in development. Uh, we took a I guess first principle approach to it rather than developing something that's complex or that nobody's gonna use. We looked at it as more practical and pragmatic approach to it. So, so as the collaboration with Beef Chain kind of uh, started evolving and we started the discussions, uh, we started looking into it as, a, okay, so, what are the things that we can uh, uh, develop that we can try out in a really practical use case scenarios out there. And so we are developing this trace management system that's built on Cardano, uh, and it'll be the first use case actually leveraging Cardano's metadata functionality in transactions. And I'm sure you'll hear about this in a lot of the uh, Cardano sessions. Uh, but essentially what we're trying to do here is, is how do we simplify this for a, for a supply chain operator to, to create their products within, to create narrations, uh, history, provenance, as well as monitor their uh, uh, Cardano balance. Uh, and this all kind of creates hashes of that in the, uh, uh, on the blockchain. And, 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 what, and over the, on the right, what we're creating is more a, 
a delightful experience for the consumers. So uh, as you've seen uh, from Phil's de Philip's demo, that a consumer could go and scan a QR code of, a, of, a, uh, of an item in the, at the restaurant or a, or a retail shop. And what we want to do is, is highlight kind of what this product is about, highlight the ranch uh, family that's been taking care of this cattle, you know, how they're feeding it, how they're raising it, um, and, um, and provide those attestations and certifications, as well as give the consumer a way for, uh, for them to track kind of all these thing in, a, in, a, uh, in, a, in, a, in an easy to use format. So um, to, to put it all together, I mean, we kind of aim to, uh, to provide supply chain visibility, uh, brand protection, consumer engagement, and, and trust. And with that, uh, we'll, uh, uh, we're, we're at the end of the session. Thank you everyone for participating and uh, thank you for all the presenters here. And uh, with that, we'll, uh, we'll move over to Q&A. One last note, uh, if anyone wants to know more about our solutions, please feel free to reach out at business.development.iohk.io. Thank you very much. Thank you.